Kevin Deal here, and on today's episode, we are going to be talking about my favorite portrait lens, the Canon RF 85mm 1.2 USM. So those of you who follow my channel know that I don't do technical reviews. I don't take pictures of charts. I do a little bit of pixel peeping, but in general, I just look at how a tool works for my professional work, and then I determine as to whether or not it's going to be right for me. Well, today's episode, we're talking about almost two years of my work, my professional work, with the RF 85mm 1.2 USM. Most YouTube episodes make you wait until the end to show you the photo slide examples. I'm gonna kick off today's episode where I'm gonna show you lots of my favorite work and I'm gonna scatter a lot of my favorite work throughout the entirety of this episode. Hopefully these photo examples will help you determine as to whether or not this is going to be the right tool for you and your work. A lot of portrait photographers out there love the 85 millimeter focal length. It happens to be my favorite focal length, and this happens to be my favorite all-time lens, the Canon RF 85 millimeter 1.2. So what are my general impressions of this lens and why is it my favorite? Well, the bokeh on it is absolutely insane. The nine aperture blades on it give it some really smooth backgrounds, some great subject isolation. The older version of this lens, the EF 85 1.2, was a really good portrait lens. It had a really specific look. One of the shortcomings of that lens is that wide open at 1.2, it was incredibly soft. The 85 1.2 RF version of this lens is incredibly sharp wide open. You stop it down, it's even more sharp. It might be the sharpest lens I've ever used in my entire life. And then when you combine it with the advanced autofocusing capabilities of the new R5 and R6, it is a world-class lens. So we did a vintage modern tennis themed shoot styled at the tennis courts near my house. I was joined by the lovely Nadia Pakes who modeled as well as stylist Sparkle Souls. Links in the description for both below. Now, I love doing gear reviews. I love talking about gear, but a lot of times on these sets, you're taking tennis balls and tossing them around to make foreground elements. That's me right there, one, two, three. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. One more time, one, two, three. We spent a good chunk of the morning knocking out three looks. We knocked out everything from general portraits to detail shots. And then one of my favorite things, I know you think of 35 and 50 as more of environmental lenses, but I love getting low to the ground, backing up and using the 85 to capture the environment. Of course, it's always gonna shine on head and shoulders, but don't forget to use it for environmental. So who is this lens for? This lens is for portrait photographers of all kinds. Uh, if you're a wedding photographer, you shoot fashion, you're a studio photographer, this is your lens. You can use it for other cool things too. Not very practical, but I've used it for street photography before and I've had some pretty cool results with it. Who else is this lens for? People who love bokeh. If you want your background to be completely obliterated and melted, this is probably the best lens you can get. So as I stated, one of the pros of this lens is how sharp it is wide open. That's very rare for a 1.2 lens. That's one of the great things about the new RF lenses from Canon. Another shortcoming of the predecessors to this lens is when they were wide open, they'd have lots of chromatic aberration, lots of purple fringing. You don't get that on these lenses because they have a unique coating and a unique design 
that combats that and does an excellent job of minimizing chromatic aberration. Another shortcoming to the predecessor of this lens was extremely slow moving motors for focusing. The big front glass elements on the older EF lenses took forever to find focus. This lens is snappy, it focuses incredibly fast, and that is one of the reasons why it carries a hefty price tag. Another pro of this lens is it's incredibly durable. I dropped this lens attached to my R5 out of my backpack on my driveway. I had a heart attack because I thought I just lost a really expensive setup, but to my surprise, the lens was fine, the R5 was fine. I did get a tiny little crack right here, which kind of sucks, but other than that, the lens works fine, the optical quality is great. Um, so nothing to worry about, it's durable. That's one of the reasons why it's so expensive. It's also weather sealed. So if it's raining on you, you've got nothing to worry about. Although maybe I don't have weather sealing on here anymore, I'll have to find out. Like all the new Canon RF lenses, there is a control ring right here and it clicks. You can get it declicked at the factory for an additional fee. I don't know why you would want to get it declicked. I, I actually like stepped knobs that rotate. Uh, but the great thing about this is you can assign it to aperture. So maybe if you're a Fuji user and you're coming over to Canon and you're used to having aperture control uh, on a ring on your lens, you can do that. You can assign this to your ISO. You can assign this to your white balance. You can assign it to your shutter speed. I personally assign it to my autofocus type because sometimes I have to switch from eye detect to face detect and then maybe I need to go do a wide zone or whatever. So I like to change the autofocus type. So let's talk about the cons of this lens. This lens is pretty big. It's an 87 millimeter filter thread, a very large piece of glass. It's pretty heavy. It clocks in at about 2.63 pounds. So there's two versions of this lens. The one I have is the standard version. They also have a version called the DS. The difference between the two is that this one is just a standard 85 1.2. And then the DS version stands for Defocus Smooth. The Defocus Smooth version is $300 more. So this one's $2,800 and then that one is $3,100. And to get the Defocus Smooth version, all that's gonna do for you is it makes what's already a creamy background even creamier, but at the expense that you lose about a stop of light. So if you buy this lens for its low light performance and you wanna get the DS version, I just wanna caution you that while you do get the depth of field performance of 1.2, you lose the low light performance of having a 1.2 lens. I personally opted for the regular version because I didn't want to lose that light because I already I already loved the bokeh it gave me. That brings me to another con of this lens, which is at 1.2, if you shoot this at 2 p.m. and the sun is out, it lets in so much light that even if you're at 1 8,000th of a second, you're gonna blow out your highlights. So there is an added expense that almost costs the same amount as buying the Defocus Smooth version of the lens, which is you need to get a neutral density filter. I bought a Freewell neutral density filter. It was about $100, $150. Uh, it was a variable two to five stop filter. I haven't found that it's really affected the image quality that much, so I roll with it. I just wanted to make you aware that if you're a photographer who shoots outdoors and you want to shoot wide open, you're going to need to slow down the light. You're basically putting sunglasses over your lens so it slows down the amount of light that comes in. As I said, this lens is expensive. My philosophy as to whether or not you should buy a lens that's this expensive is if it's your moneymaker, if you're a portrait photographer and you're shooting headshots, something along those lines, you like to shoot wide open portraits. If 85 is your focal length that you go to every time, then I could see justification for spending that much money on this lens. Now, if you primarily do environmental portraits, you like to shoot at 35 or 50, you know, maybe you can look into some alternatives to save some money. You've got the RF 85 F2, which I've used in the past. I actually returned it to buy this because I actually like the wide open 1.2 look, but you also have uh, third party options from Sigma. You have third party options from Tamron. And then you also have the older version uh, EF mount lenses that you can convert to RF. So you have the older EF 1.8, which really doesn't compare to this because it's an older entry level lens, but you could go to the predecessor to this, which is the EF 1.2. But remember, I did say it's a softer lens. It's not quite as sharp. The new autofocusing system, if you do have an R5 or an R6, may give that lens some new life. So that's something to think about. If you're watching this video, you love to shoot wide open, you love 85, but you just can't swing the RF 85 millimeter 1.2, I recommend going with the EF 85 1.4 IS. I think it's the closest you're going to get in terms of image quality. Now, if you do purchase third-party lenses that are EF mounts, you will have to buy an adapter. Not a big deal. It's just a little extra money. But I will tell you that all the lenses that I've used adapted have worked flawlessly. That includes Canon adapters and third-party adapters from companies like Viltrox. 
One other thing I want to point out about the 85 millimeter 1.2 is it's not an 85 millimeter focal length. So manufacturers approximate specs. So when you go buy a 50 millimeter, you go buy a 35 millimeter, you go buy a 28 millimeter, if you were to actually measure it out, it's kind of close, it's an approximation, but it's not built exactly to that spec. The 85 runs long. So when you do a comparison with this lens versus like the 85 F2 or the 85 1.8, or maybe the Samyang 1.4, you're gonna see that this renders slightly tighter images and therefore it compresses images a little bit better, which also usually means better bokeh. That's part of what gives it its amazing look. I just wanted to make sure you understood that, that this is technically a 90 millimeter lens. Another con, maybe, is that it doesn't have image stabilization, but the R5 and the R6 have in-body image stabilization, but say you're an RP or an R owner, they don't have in-body stabilization. That may or may not affect you. Keep in mind that I already said, if you're shooting at 1.2 and you're at 1 8,000th of a second, do you really need IS? So it really depends on how you use this lens. I've used this lens for video before on a tripod. I would never handhold this lens, even with IBIS. It's just not very stable at 85 millimeters. So, uh, but it does actually make for some pretty cool video if you wanna do a nice tight shot with a beautiful out of focus background. So tripod, video, this lens, that's it. Don't handhold it. Another thing, and this is a personal philosophy, I do not put any UV filters on my lenses. My philosophy on that is why would you spend almost $3,000 on something and then put something right up in front of it? Uh, also, you get flares that can happen when you turn and the sun hits it a certain way. Also, a little secret. So the most expensive lens Canon care pack you can buy is $259 and it covers your lens for four years. If you're gonna buy a Canon Protect filter for this, it's almost $200 anyway. So why not just spend the 60 extra dollars and if, by the way, if you drop the lens and you crack it, you just send it off to Canon, you have that warranty for four years. So I say don't buy UV filters. I know that's a controversial topic and people think that it protects your lenses, but I actually had a 70 to 200 with a UV filter on it. I dropped it, it broke anyway. That front element broke, the UV filter broke, I lost the lens. It doesn't always work despite what people will tell you. So I wanna have a subjective talk with you about why I love this lens. It really has a nice fine art look. Everything you take on this looks like it belongs on a wall. It's just, it just has this really beautiful, super artistic look. So I, I highly recommend it. If you can afford it, it's absolutely worth it. If you're on the fence and you're thinking, man, maybe I should get the Samyang 1.4, maybe I should get the F2 from Canon, the RF, I really do recommend checking this out. If it's in your budget, it's totally worth getting if you're a portrait photographer. Thanks for checking out this video today. I hope my example images helped you out in determining as to whether or not the RF 85 millimeter 1.2 L USM is right for you. I really do appreciate your support. I really do appreciate you checking out these videos. If you found it educational, if you found it helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. I really do appreciate your support. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye.